In part 2 of this project, we are going to create a Quartus project, synthesize the top module, connect the design to the FPGA pins, and in the end program the DE1 SOC board and do a small demonstration. In this part, we are going to see how our Verilog code from part 1 is translated by the Intel Quartus synthesis tool into the circuit below. The D1 SOC board will behave in the same way that you see here. Let's create the Quartus project now and program the FPGA. You open your project folder and you need to have the same structure that we use for the rest of our projects. Now we are going to open Quartus and create a new project in the synth folder. New project, next, we change the working folder. Select folder, here we write project, next, empty project, we browse the RTL file, we select the blinky LED, open, next, select our FPGA, I select this from here, next, here we don't change anything, Next, here is our summary, and finish. Let's compile the design. As you can see, we have an error. We need to go to Files, left click, now right click, and set as top level. We press the compile button again. After the compile is done, let's analyze the warnings. We click this, and we see this warning that we had in our previous project also. Let's fix this. To get the best synthesis results, we need to create a Synopsys Design Constraint file. This is helping the synthesis tool place the logic elements so they meet the timing requirements of the project. To create the Synopsys Design Constraint file, we need to do the following. Click on Tools, Timing Analyzer, File, New SDC File. Now you need to paste this code. This name over here is the same name our clock port has in our design. Another important thing about the structure of the SDC is the period of the clock. My FPGA has a clock frequency of 50 MHz so I need to declare here 20 nanoseconds. This may vary if your board has another clock period. You don't care at this level about the other parameters. File, save. You see that you're in the send folder and you write here project. Save, we close this, now we close this also. Now, if we look at the files, you can see that we have our RTL and our SDC file. Let's press the compile again. As you can see now, all the warnings regarding the Synopsys Design Constraint files are gone. Let's assign the pins now. If you have the D1 SOC board, then the pin planner should look like this. Let's close it and resynthesize. After the synthesis process is finished, you can see that we don't have any critical warnings. Let's see how the synthesis tool translated our very low code into a digital circuit. We open the RTL viewer, and now we compare with the RTL. This is our counter that has 25 bits. Here is the counter max, that is this comparator over here. And this value is this constant from the B port. The LED registers are over here, and you can see how the Q 
is fed into the D and reverted. So at each clock, you can get a toggle. OLED is directly connected with the output of the LED register. The counter uses this adder to increment until it reaches the maximum value. This is it. You can see how properly written Verilog code translates into synthesizable digital circuits. Let's program the FPGA board now. We press Auto Detect. We select this. We click Change File. We select this. Click on Program Configure and then start. Now the FPGA is programmed. Let's see how it works on the FPGA board. Let's check out how the design behaves for a LED frequency of 1 Hz. Initially our module is in reset. Now we set the reset pin and we can see how the LEDs are toggling with a frequency of 1 Hz. I've changed now the LED frequency to 4 Hz, recompiled the design and reprogrammed the FPGA. Let's see what happens. Now you can see how the LEDs are blinking with a 4 Hz frequency. This means that we have 4 toggles per second. Please leave a comment if you manage to implement this project on your FPGA. I'm very curious about this. If you like this practical FPGA tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. If you like this tutorial and you're interested in an easy path for learning Verilog for FPGA or ASIC design and verification, I gladly recommend you my course Verilog HDL Fundamentals for Digital Design and Verification. You can find the link in the video description. For more tutorials and support, you can join our Facebook community. Your strong Verilog foundation is only one click away.